um, three years ago, we organized an access conference entitled The Triumph of Science. And um, we also had people from the world of uh, transhumanism. Um, and I was um, fascinated by the fact that based on a pretty pessimistic view on human nature, uh, they think uh, that due to the technology we are having, uh, we should uh, um, improve human beings with this technology because the world is too dangerous, uh, there are indeed nuclear weapons, and uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the tragedies will not happen, uh, uh, we should use new technology uh, to improve human nature. What do you think about that? I'm very skeptical. Uh, first of all, I'm skeptical that we need to re-engineer humans to achieve peace. Canada and the United States have not fought a war since the War of 1812. <clears throat> no one had to re-engineer Canadians or Americans. The Netherlands and uh, Germany have not fought a war in, in, in more than 70 years. We did not have to genetically engineer the Dutch. There are many changes to our institutions and our norms and our ideas that can reduce or eliminate the, the uh, risks of nuclear war uh, without what I consider a rather quixotic uh, mm -hmm. attempt to change the, uh, uh, the course of human evolution. I'm also, on purely scientific grounds, highly skeptical of the prophecy that we will re-engineer human nature. I think that these predictions came in the uh, during the brief burst of enthusiasm for finding the gene for intelligence, the gene for altruism, and so on. Uh, we now know that there is no such gene. There are hundreds or thousands of genes, each of which uh, increments or decrements psychological traits by a, a tiny amount. To genetically engineer someone, you would, it's not a matter of sticking in one gene. You'd have to replace thousands of genes. We have no idea how to do that. We're not going to know how to do it anytime soon. And we also don't know how many of those genes might lead to an improvement in one uh, aspect and a uh, risk in another aspect. There may be a gene that increases your IQ by two-thirds of a point, but also increases your chances of getting brain cancer or bipolar disorder by a third of a point. Uh, and there, it's going to be a very long time, if ever, uh, until we know how to balance those tiny benefits and uh, tiny risks multiplied by hundreds or thousands of genes. So on purely scientific grounds, I doubt that it will happen. And then on historical grounds, I don't think we need it. What will be your choice? What is it that you think is essential uh, to make sure that in whatever form, quote unquote, we can save the world? Uh, we have to, first of all, have a, an empirical mindset. You were right, there are many hypotheses. We have to look to see which ones uh, have made the world better and which ones have made the world worse. I think the track record of messiahs is not particularly good. <laughs> I think there's an excellent reason to believe that there's no such thing as a messiah and there never will be. Uh, on the other hand, there are some things that, that, that do work. Um, international uh, institutions like the United Nations has uh, decreased the probability of war, hasn't eliminated war, but it's made it less likely. We have reason to believe that uh, trade and um, cosmopolitanism, uh, the movement of people and ideas has been a positive force. We have reason to think that democracy has more advantages than disadvantages. And I think the, uh, what we have to do is not believe that we can deduce what will make the world better from first principles and then impose them uh, and, uh, uh, in full confidence that we know how the world is going to react, because we don't, we're not that smart. Uh, but we really have to look at our past track, re track record, look at the data, what makes, thing, what makes people better off, what makes people worse off. Now the conference it will be the weekend after the American elections. Will you still say the same things if Mr. Trump will be the next president of America? I think it's extremely unlikely, and all the indicators are that he will not be the next president. Uh, if he is president, I, I think that that would be a, definitely a negative development. And there's, there's no guarantee that in all positive trends, such as the trend toward tolerance, cosmopolitanism, democracy, um, knowledge-guided decision-making will continue. There's no, um, the, the, uh, there are no iron laws that propel the world in a particular direction. There are contingent events that are unpredictable, so bad things could happen. Uh, how bad could it be? 
uh, much depends, uh, that is, if Trump were elected, much depends on how much a single man can uh, control the entire apparatus of American government. Uh, fortunately, American government has some checks and balances built in. There are, uh, there's the Supreme Court, there's the, 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 the um, legislatures, there's local governments and state governments, and, and just the willingness or reluctance of the American people to go along with particular policies. So as long as Trump doesn't become the Fuhrer, uh, with, uh, or, or like Mao, with absolute control, and I think that's, that's unlikely, then the worst case scenarios probably will not happen. But then Trump being elected is itself a worst case scenario that I think will probably not happen. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve Pinker, and we are very much looking forward to meet you again in Amsterdam.